What's worth more? A cute cat, LeBron James dunking, or this tweet? If you ask the internet, it's the tweet. In the past year, these three items were valued online for the combined total of $4.4 million. What gives them that value? It's because they're non-fungible tokens, or NFTs. They represent a unique piece of media, like an image or a video, and they live on a blockchain. At the start of 2021, few people had heard of NFTs. By the end of the year, over $24 billion had been spent on them. It's a wild, potentially lucrative marketplace. Why would anyone pay $69 million for a JPEG and a hyperlink? <laughs> You're afraid of missing out. So it is a frenzy. But I also think in the frenzy, we're seeing the pillars of stability grow as well. Are they just overpriced digital art or a promising technology that could transform the way we live? The most exciting uses for NFTs are possibly things that we can't even imagine yet. To many, the world of crypto is a foreign universe. As bizarre as Alice in Wonderland, I'm Alice Fulwood. As The Economist's finance correspondent, I have spent lots of time writing about crypto and NFTs. One of my pieces was on our cover in September with a pretty cool image. It would make a good NFT, right? We thought as much, so we decided to sell it as one. And down into the rabbit hole I went. Three, two, one. In this world, everyone talks in acronyms. Money is cryptocurrency, and goods are NFTs. An NFT is a token, a digital asset that exists on a blockchain. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin are also tokens, but Bitcoins are fungible or interchangeable. You can swap one Bitcoin for another one and still have the same thing. You can't do that with an NFT. They are non-fungible or unique assets. They link to the media they represent, providing an irrefutable digital certificate of ownership. To sell ours, I minted an NFT linking to our cover image and put it up for sale on an NFT auction site and watched as the bids came through. Our NFT sold for 99.9 .9 Ether, a cryptocurrency commonly used to buy NFTs. It was equivalent to about $420,000. We donated the net proceeds to the Economist Educational Foundation, an independent charity we support. But why was it worth more than the other images of our cover going around online? The fact that our NFT was the only one minted by The Economist gave it scarcity. With that came value. And purchasing it on the blockchain meant the buyer could prove they were the rightful owner. Being able to track provenance and monetary value has been a real game changer for digital artists, which makes sense when one of the men who created them is one. I've been doing digital art for a long, long time um, and got interested in it uh, in the 90s. You would do um, internet-based projects, but in all of those cases, that media kind of goes out and it's um, kind of just out in the wild, right? And there's no question of, of economic value of that stuff. For a long time, it was difficult for digital artists to make money with their work, until blockchains, like the one that underpins Bitcoin, were invented. That was something that artists needed. They needed a way to be able to share their work as they were doing, but they also needed to be able to hang on to something so that they could have, uh, you know, be able to participate in a market. In 2014, Kevin teamed up with a technical expert, Anil Dash, to mint the world's first NFT and present the idea to a conference full of people. Hey, are you interested in some animated GIF art? Am I ever? <laughs> I got a good, I got a, I got a cool thing here. Check this out. Hey, do you want to, you want to buy that? Yeah, name your price in any currency. <laughs> Maybe you're not surprised to hear the audience didn't really understand what we were talking about. At the same time, uh, even back then, in, you know, in 2014, I knew that it was a, an important idea, and I knew that it was a potentially transformative idea. It took seven years for NFTs to hit the mainstream. In 2020, around 150,000 NFTs were sold on OpenSea, one of the biggest NFT trading platforms. In 2021, 
more than four times that were being sold monthly. There were a few things that drove that boom. The first is COVID-19. It seems as though lockdown boredom or stimulus checks tempted a lot of young people and new people into dabbling in experimental kinds of financial markets. You saw Bitcoin reaching new all-time highs. You saw the sort of second biggest uh, cryptocurrency, Ethereum, also reaching new all-time highs. As crypto wealth grew, the supply of NFTs grew with it. New artists started minting NFTs in their thousands, skyrocketing some to previously unimaginable levels of success. Some were shocked when traditional auction houses like Sotheby's and Christie's bought in on the action. Kesh is a digital artist whose work featured in one of Christie's first NFT auctions. I don't think that 13-year-old Kesh would have ever imagined that she would be selling her artworks at Christie's next to Warhol and some of the greatest artists that have ever lived. It's just so exciting because it really just shows the evolution of digital art in a sense and the fact that it is now really being considered as a real art form. On the business side of things, the shift to NFTs has been lucrative. Colleen is vice president of auctions at Artnet, a global marketplace for online fine art sales that made the leap to NFTs in late 2021. For our art NFT inaugural sale, the average transaction price in that sale showed a 270% increase versus the average transaction price in one of our traditional sales. And likewise, 100% of our buyers in that first sale were new to Artnet auctions. We were able to cultivate an entirely new potential client base by putting our toes in this world. And I think the runway for growth there is undeniable. But buying and selling NFTs comes with a lot of risks. For those minting them, it can be a legal quagmire. Quentin Tarantino learned that the hard way when he tried to sell the script of Pulp Fiction as an NFT. The typist is the only person who has ever seen it. Uh, he was like, well, that sounds like it would be a pretty good NFT. He's now and being now sued by Miramax, who say it's their intellectual property. For those investing in NFTs, there's another real danger, inflated prices. Those who are thinking of investing in NFTs for investment purposes, the reality is 99% of them might not trade on the secondary market for much of anything. Skeptics say the whole market is a Ponzi scheme, where those who got in early are now making money as new buyers enter the market and bid up prices. But these flaws haven't stopped NFTs from being widely used. They are moving beyond the world of art and into the metaverse. <laughs> Virtual worlds like these are growing in number and scale. You can read our coverage on them by clicking the link above. NFTs could be the building blocks of a digital economy within these spaces. The things you buy, be it a hat for your avatar or a plot of land, can be purchased as NFTs. But some gamers are sceptical. They worry that this is just another way for video game companies to make money from players. Big brands are also seeing dollar signs. Adidas, for example, has started making metaverse-ready digital clothing. But NFTs could also have more serious uses. Being able to securely document and track ownership could open up some powerful new possibilities. At their core, NFTs are just unique digital representations of assets, and that could essentially apply to any asset, be it real world or digital. A university degree, for example, could be issued as an NFT. A degree living securely on a blockchain and verified by the university would be near impossible to fake and could be linked up to existing online sites like LinkedIn. NFTs in real estate could streamline the process of buying a home. You could dream up hundreds or thousands of different ways to potentially use that technology. But if NFTs are to become more widely used, there needs to be a lot of innovation. The lack of a middleman means there's no one to help if there are any mistakes in a transaction. Handling NFTs is also expensive. Adding an NFT to a blockchain involves paying fees, known as gas, which fluctuate wildly and can end up costing a lot. 
we paid around $98 to sell ours. The carbon cost can also be high. Most NFTs are issued on the Ethereum blockchain and the network of computers that maintains the Ethereum blockchain uses an awful lot of energy to do it. The carbon cost of our auction was about the same as a long haul economy flight. There are thousands of startups trying to find solutions to these problems. It's a time reminiscent of the dot-com boom, when market madness surrounded a new technology. But when the dust settled, the internet became the backbone of our society. Could the same happen with NFTs? There's both investment potential, there's trading potential, and there's very functional potential as well, insofar as things authenticate or provide proof of ownership. So I think gold rush, absolutely. Paradigm shift, absolutely. And on the precipice of a new era, really. Right now, NFTs, especially those linked to digital artworks, are overhyped and overpriced. But the technology is worth watching closely. It's possible that, when collecting a degree or buying a house, our future could lie with NFTs. Thank you for watching. For more of our coverage on decentralized finance and NFTs, please click the link and don't forget to subscribe.